We all have our bucket lists in life, things that we want to do or see during the limited time that God gives us on earth. Last week, I got to cross off one of the items on my list that's been there for as long as I could remember. I got to watch my hometown Philadelphia Eagles finally win the Super Bowl. Before the game, there was a fascinating plot line because the underdog Eagles were taking on the Patriots dynasty. And the game itself was thrilling and featured what was probably the gutsiest play call in history, the Philly special trick play that resulted in the Eagles quarterback catching rather than throwing a touchdown. Are they really going to go for well, this? They, they, you got to take three. Here we go. This could decide the game. And which resulted in quite a bit of excitement at the Rothenberg family viewing party at my brother's house. <laughs> After the game, I started to ask myself, what lessons can we learn? What lessons can the Jewish people learn? Fortunately, it was as if the Eagles players knew that I was asking that question. First, here's Nick Foles, the backup quarterback who beat Tom Brady in his post-game press conference. I think the big thing is don't be afraid to fail. Failure is part of life. That's a part of building character and growing. Like without failure, who would you be? I wouldn't be up here if I hadn't fallen thousands of times, made mistakes. When you look at a struggle in your life, just know that you know, that's just an opportunity for your character to grow. And here's Jason Kelsey, the Eagles' center, the heart of the team. Well, when I was 18 years old, when I was not given a scholarship to play at any Division I university, my father and mother told me to stay after my dream. And I've officially accomplished the best thing in this sport. And here's Kelsey, dressed like a mummer, during the parade. No one wanted us. No one liked this team. No analysts liked this team to win the Super Bowl, and nobody likes our fans. Hungry dogs run fast, and that's this team. The biggest underdog is, it's y'all Philadelphia. For 52 years, y'all have been waiting for this. You wanna talk about underdog? You want to talk about a hungry dog? For 52 years, you've been starved in this championship. When those athletes talk about overcoming adversity, success after failure, the next man up when the backups took over for the starters, being the underdog, they're touching on something that's much deeper. Because God himself, when describing how he took the Jews out of Egypt during the Exodus, settled on the following metaphor. He tells us that we have to remember how he took us out of Egypt on the wings of eagles. Why eagles? One reason is for that very one that we've been talking about. Because eagles' feathers molt. They fall off and then they regenerate. What an apt metaphor for Jewish history. Throughout all the persecutions and the exiles and the forced conversions and the assimilation, how many people have we lost? Leaders, influencers, rank and file. And there's always the next man up or the next woman up, the next person to take over, fill a role so that we can soldier on. And there's another reason for this metaphor. Rashi, the greatest of the commentators, tells us that the eagle is the king of the sky. It flies higher than any other bird. Other birds, when they have to carry their young, carry them in their talons because they're worried about an aerial attack from another bird from above. But eagles don't have that worry. So instead, they carry their young on their backs. Which begs the question, how does the fledgling eagle, the baby eagle, get on its mother or father's back? The answer is, it has to jump. God's out there. He's willing to bear us back then and in the future someday on his wings, like the wings of eagles. But we've first got to sign up. We've got to tell him that we're interested. We've got to take that first step. We've got to jump on his back before he can bear us aloft, before we can soar.